In Warframe, you have arcanes. For those of you who don't know, arcanes are like power-ups in a sense. We have arcanes for our Warframes, weapons, operators, amps, and now we recently have obtained arcanes for melee as well. Arcanes are really important in Warframe. You can obtain them through many different types of content. Cetus, Eidolon Hunting, Zaramon, Fortuna, Steel Pass, Deveri, etc, etc. However, the new Whispers in the Walls update has brought this guy, Lloyd. Sorry, I mean, this Lloyd, the real one. And Lloyd has brought us the wonderful new mechanic called Arcane Dissolution. Now, Arcane Dissolution allows you to dissolve your unranked arcanes that you have farmed to get Vosphor. Specifically unranked though, you can then use Vosphor to open up packs from each different piece of content that you can farm the respective arcanes from. Now, the Arcane Dissolution mechanic is actually really nice because this allows you to gamble your life away in hopes of getting an Arcane Energize or just any Arcane that you want from any piece of content. Let's say you don't like doing the very content, then you could just farm a whole bunch of Arcanes from other pieces of content, dissolve those duplicates or the ones you don't want, and buy a whole bunch of Deveri packs. This is also a great opportunity for you to make some serious Platinum as you can target farm certain Arcanes that are expensive like Arcane Energize or the expensive Deveri Arcanes like Arcane Reaper. So in this guide, we're going to go over how you can farm a crap ton of Arcanes so you can dissolve them to get Vosphor and then either target farm an Arcane or you can sell them to make a lot of Platinum. Just to be clear, I'm not going to go over the maths behind everything like Arcanes per hour and so on. I'm just going to show you the best farm so that you can get the most amount of Arcanes to dissolve them into Vosphor. So let's start with the first way to get Arcanes and that will be Open Worlds. Now this entirely depends on how far you are in Warframe. The higher your master rank, the more Arcanes you get to buy daily from the open world vendors because the open world vendors lock you behind daily standing limits. If you are above MR9, you will have 20,000 standing per day. I'm going to use this as a baseline example. If you are above MR9 and let's say you are in legendary or whatever, you will get to buy way more Arcanes per day. So this will be more profitable for you. 20,000 standing per day is a decent amount of standing to start buying Arcanes from the vendors. Firstly, let's talk about Cetus. In Cetus, you have two options. Hawk, which is the Zor brother, he sells Zor Arcanes. Now, Zor Arcanes go for about 10,000 stand each, which means if you're above MR9, you only get two to three a day at max, which isn't the best, but they go for around 24 Vos for each. However, the other vendor is Onko. Now, Onko is the amp guy who sells all the amp arcanes and amp parts. You will see there are some that are 10,000 standing and then there are some that are cheaper, which go as low as 2,500 standing. Here is the thing. The 10,000 standing ones only give you around 18 Vosphor per. The 2.5k arcanes give you 12 Vosphor per arcane. Now with 20k standing, you can get only two arcanes, which is 36 Vosphor for the 10k ones, versus eight 2.5k arcanes, which is 96 Vosphor. Like I said, if you are a higher MR player, you get to buy more per day. So, of course, buying the cheaper ones is way better. Now, this also applies to Fortuna, except you only get Little Duck here because you can't dissolve Pax Arcanes from Rude Zood. Again, Little Duck has cheaper Arcanes, which are 5,000 standing, and they each go for around 12 Vos for each. Not as low as Onko, but still, nonetheless, 5,000 standing is better than 10,000 standing. Little Duck is a bit more tedious to get your daily standing as you need Toroids, but if you are a profit taker farmer, then this will be very easy for you. If you are behind on your open worlds, then this is a nice little boost of motivation to get going on your open worlds and start farming your syndicate levels. Many people have their own ways of farming their daily standing caps. I personally recommend doing mining or doing conservation for Cetus, but for Tuna, you can't dissolve Pax Arcane, so you can only focus on Little Duck, which means Toroids. There are many ways that you can get Toroids. I've made a video on it a long time ago, so if you want to check that out, you can. Personally, I like mining because you can stack them up and just hand them in over time until they run out. You also have the Zaramon. Cavalero offers the Zaramon Arcanes, which you can get Eternal Eradicate for 5,000 standing each. Each of these Arcanes go for around 22 Vos for each, which is quite a nice amount. Besides, Zaramon is not the hardest to farm the Void Plumes, just run Exterminate with the group, or you can run the new Whispers in the Walls tile sets and keep killing Angels, which gives you Pinions, and Pinions give you the highest amounts of standing per hand in. Now we are going to come back to the Zaramon for the best farm later on in the video. Remember, this is leaning towards more of a passive farm. 
This is not really an active farm in the sense you're farming one specific mission for arcane drops. You're just doing open world content or Zaramon missions to cap your daily standing limits and of course buy from the vendors every day. If you manage to have the time to do all three pieces of content per day, well, you will see you'll be able to get quite a bit of packs over the weeks. Obviously, not everyone has max levels and standing caps, or they simply just don't have the time to do all three open worlds a day. So just pick one you're the furthest in and focus on that one and then slowly level up the open worlds. And just whenever you have time, just hand in and get some arcades. Moving on to the next piece of content, which is Eidolon hunting. Now, Eidolon hunting is not a beginner friendly piece of content. We all know this. This is not something for those of you who are lower than MR8. I would say it can be done lower than that. Make no mistake, but just for comfort and being able to at least get a Rubico, I don't think Eidolon hunting will be worth it. I have made a guide on Eidolon hunting. Eidolon hunting is generally a mid to late game content. So just bear that in mind when you watch this video, please. A quick rundown, if you want to do Eidolons and have a basic understanding of them, the 123 ample suffice in the beginning and then you can move on to the 177 or the 777. You can use Vault, he is the perfect frame for this. This is my endgame build. You can just use cheaper mods for him, but this is quite expensive with the Umbra Former. You can then use either the Rubico Prime or base Rubico, the Zenith if you have it from the Logan Rewards, the Burst on and Kanan, or the very expensive Vectus Prime. Alternatively, choose whatever weapon works for you, and if it's cheaper, go for it. For companions, use Worm Prime with Negate, or just the normal Worm to at least have the Negate mod. And then it's all our queen. I will reiterate this. Eidolon hunting requires serious investment if you want it to be worth your while. Of course, you can do it on a budget, that works too. But if you want to do something like 6x3s, and if you want to get really good at Eidolon hunting, you're going to need to put some investment in. You have two options here. If you are new to Eidolon hunting, it may be better for you to just farm the Terrorist. If you get good at killing the terrorist, you can kill one every two minutes, 30 ish, maybe even less. I'm not going to give an exact time as it depends on the person, but the average person should be about two to three minutes or even two to four minutes. This will kill two birds with one stone because you get to farm cores, which you can hand into Onko on Cetus, which will allow you to get more arcanes. Every night is 50 minutes long, so if you can get a terrorist fight down to two to three minutes, well, you can do the maths here. If you get faster, you get more. Or if you're an experienced Eidolon hunter and can do 6x3s comfortably, or even just 5x3x2s, then I would say do the full hunt because you get the chance of getting good arcanes like Energize and so on. But if your entire goal is just to dissolve arcanes to get Phosphor, then you can do the Terrorist, as the average arcane from the Terrorist goes for around 14 to 21 Phosphor each. So this could be potentially a very good farm for those who really don't want to get into serious Eidolon hunting, but really want the Arcanes. This is up to you which way you want to go about this. It all depends on how far you're on the game and how much time you have to put into Eidolon hunting. Personally, if your focus is just Vosphor and you just want to get Arcane Dissolution to open up the packs, taking down the Terrorist, just rinsing and repeating, just killing one Eidolon is not a bad farm. Let's move on to the last farm on this list, and it is my favorite game mode in Warframe, and that is Void Cascade. Now, Void Cascade is arguably one of the best game modes in Warframe. It's a fast scaling mission, takes you about an hour 15 to hour 30 to get to level cap, and you get the Zaramon Arcanes from here. Here is the thing, the Thraxes from Void Cascade drop the Arcanes, and they are affected by the rare mod chance boosters. However, in Warframe at the moment, it's never been easier to find someone who has a mod chance booster. Between Circuit, Daily Sorties, Archon Hunts, and of course the odd chance Barra decides to pull through, people get mod chance boosters a lot easier now than before. I would recommend doing Void Cascade in Steel Path as you have a base 100% mod chance boost, which means you have a much higher chance of getting Arcanes from Thraxes. I have done a guide on Voyager Skate a long time ago explaining how to get to level cap and so on, but I do want to do an updated guide on Voyager Skate as it's too good of a game mode at the moment, especially when you're running it with a mod chance booster. You can run it without one, obviously, but you'll just get less. Another thing which makes this farm so great is the fact that while you're farming the arcanes in mission, you're also getting pinions and such slowly, which you can hand into Cavalera and buy more arcanes daily. For frame suggestions, Ash is very good, really comfortable to do endurance runs here, Octavia is a no-brainer, 
Revenant, of course. Mag is also really fun too. Or simply any frame you enjoy playing with a decent build. Remember, you don't necessarily need to go to level cap. You can easily do 30 minute runs and just reset the whole time. The whole goal is to kill as many Thraxes as possible. For weapon suggestions, honestly, the OG incarnate weapons you get from the Zaramon is all you need for the Thraxes. The Fenmore, Felox, Latum are all godly weapons for Void Cascade. Alternatively, any of the new incarnate weapons will shred Thraxes no problem. This is more of a late game activity, so for the beginners watching, I do apologize, but this is only really super viable in Steel Path. I highly recommend farming Void Cascade, it's fast and challenging. For some honorable mentions, Arbitrations are not a bad hybrid farm where you're not focusing on just arcanes but you're able to farm Vitus and so on while maybe getting a few arcanes from mission rewards. Conjunction survival is not a bad one as well. Every five minutes you get Lua Thrax Plasms and you will get more per person in your squad so it's not a bad farm either. Of course, as you play Steel Path, you will passively gain Arcanes by killing Acolytes over time. You will start to stack up quite a bit of Acolyte Arcanes as you play. I personally would not recommend Deviri or Isolation Vaults in an attempt to get Arcanes, it's just not worth your time. And that concludes this video. If you are willing to put in the work for the open worlds and run Void Cascade, sprinkle in a little bit of Eidolon hunting, you will get quite a decent amount of Phosphor per day and you can gamble your life away and make some serious Platinum. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you guys want me to make an updated guide on Voyka Skate. I can do that for you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.